After 76 days in complete lockdown, millions of people in Wuhan are allowed to move again, many of them reuniting with family whom they haven't seen in all of that time. It's hard to date COVID-19. Unlike other events in history, we don't have an official start date because international scientists are yet to establish when and where it first emerged. Until then, we can't fully understand the epidemiology, nor can we work with full knowledge towards treatments and vaccines. But I think of COVID-19 in terms of January 23rd, the day when 60 million people in Wuhan and neighboring cities began to retreat into their homes for the safety of their communities. As the emergency in Wuhan now subsides, there is space to explore the timeline leading up to that point. For China, it began in late December of 2019, when the Wuhan Center for Disease Control and Prevention detected cases of pneumonia of unknown cause. On December 30th, a chain of reactions started when the Wuhan Health Commission urgently informed the medical institutions under its jurisdictions and telling them to appropriately treat these patients. The next day, December 31st, the National Health Commission, the equivalent of a health ministry, sent a working group and expert team to Wuhan to help steer the early response and to see what was happening on the ground. The public was put on alert, they were told to stay away from large gatherings and to wear face masks if they were outside their homes. The day after that was New Year's Day and the pace picked up further. The Commission began shaping an emergency response. Significantly, on January 2nd, the first samples of four patients were sent to the Chinese CDC, and that is when they began pathogen identification. Meanwhile, until they knew what they were dealing with, guidelines were drawn up to detect, diagnose and quarantine. There have been new developments every day since then, a reflection of the growing crisis, but with more cases and thus more data, they adapted and innovated according to the knowledge they were gaining. On January 3rd, China informed the World Health Organization. By January 5th, scientists in Wuhan ruled out respiratory pathogens. It wasn't influenza, it wasn't avian influenza, nor was it MERS nor SARS, a similar but not identical virus. All of this happened in the first few days, and every day counts in a fast-moving outbreak. Scientists in China were quickly able to share the genome sequence with WHO, which was then published on a global open platform, allowing international scientists to access the data and to get to work. I've heard many different words used to describe COVID-19, from smart to cruel to savage. But in my interviews with leaders shaping the response, many of them have spoken about the openness and togetherness that characterizes their collaboration. It's April 2020, and we don't yet know how this story will end, but we know more about the earlier moments, the chronology and the ability that allowed the best in science everywhere to give us the best chance to live. We thank them and we salute them. The China Current continues its special coverage on the coronavirus outbreak. Go to our social media, at The China Current, and our website for interviews, videos, and podcasts. I'm James Chow. Thank you.